endometrial polyps. The inner lining of the uterus is called the endometrium. Endometrial polyps, also known as uterine polyps, are outgrowth of the endometrium and protruding into the endometrial cavity. They may be attached to the endometrial cavity by a thin stalk and this is called a pedunculated polyp. It may have a broad base and this is called a sessile polyp. Pedunculated polyps are more common than sessile polyps. Their sizes range from a few millimeters to a few centimeters. There may be one or several polyps. Sometimes a pedunculated polyp can protrude through the cervix and into the vagina. Small blood vessels may be found especially on large polyps. Endometrial polyps are usually benign, but sometimes they can be cancerous. Causes The cause of the formation of a polyp is unknown. The endometrium is under the influence of the hormone estrogen and excessive estrogen may cause the development of polyps. Risk factors Endometrial polyps are more common in women in their 40s and 50s. These polyps can form in postmenopausal women but rarely in women younger than 20 years of age. It is also more common in women who are overweight or obese with high blood pressure, on tamoxifen, a drug used to treat breast cancer, on hormone replacement therapy. Symptoms Endometrial polyps can be asymptomatic and only detected during a routine ultrasound examination. Other symptoms are bleeding or spotting in between periods, also called intermenstrual bleeding. Bleeding after sexual intercourse called postcoital bleeding. Heavy menses. Painful menses called dysmenorrhea. This may occur when the polyp protrudes through the cervix and into the vagina. Inability to conceive. The presence of a polyp may be the cause of the inability to conceive. A polyp may prevent the implantation of an embryo. Sometimes a polyp may increase the risk of miscarriage. Bleeding or spotting after menopause. Diagnosis Endometrial polyps can be suspected when a patient has the symptoms discussed earlier. Investigations include transvaginal ultrasound, sonohistrography, hysteroscopy. Transvaginal ultrasound This is a procedure whereby an ultrasound probe is placed into the vagina to visualize the uterus and the endometrial cavity. Any irregularities in the endometrial cavity may indicate an endometrial polyp. However, in some women who have a thickened endometrial lining, a polyp may be missed. Sonohistrography A thin tube is introduced into the uterine cavity and a sterile fluid, usually saline, a salt water, is injected to distend the cavity. A transvaginal or transabdominal ultrasound scan is performed at the same time. The presence of fluid in the endometrial cavity will be able to provide a clearer picture of any growth within the endometrial cavity. Hysteroscopy This procedure is performed by placing a thin telescope called a hysteroscope through the cervix and into the uterine cavity via the vagina. It is usually done in the clinic without any anesthesia. The hysteroscope is attached to a camera system and the endometrial cavity can be visualized on a monitor. Any polyp present can be seen and even removed simultaneously. Treatment The following treatment may be recommended. Watchful waiting, medication, hysteroscopy and removal of the polyp, curitage. Watchful waiting. Asymptomatic polyps may resolve on their own. A repeat ultrasound can be done after three to six months to see whether the polyp is still present. Medication. Hormones such as progestin may be given to shrink the polyps. 
Even if the polyp shrinks, it may reappear when the hormones are stopped. Hysteroscopy and removal of the polyp. This minor surgery is usually performed under anesthesia. A hysteroscopy is performed and the polyp can be excised using slender instruments such as a grasper and a scissors. Curitage. A slender instrument is placed into the endometrial cavity and the inner lining of the uterus is scraped to remove all the polyps. This may be performed with the assistance of a hysteroscope to ensure that all the polyps have been removed and the endometrial cavity is empty. Post-operative management. If the histopathology report states that the polyp is benign, then regular follow-up is necessary to ensure that it does not recur. Rarely do endometrial polyps recur. However, if the polyps are precancerous or cancerous, then further treatment will be necessary. Prevention. There is no way of preventing the occurrence of endometrial polyps. All women, especially those women with the risk factors mentioned earlier, will need regular gynecological examination and transvaginal ultrasound scans. Summary Endometrial polyps, also known as uterine polyps, are outgrowths of the inner lining of the uterus and protruding into the endometrial cavity. They can vary in size and number. They usually present with intermenstrual bleeding. Diagnosis is made by transvaginal ultrasound, sonohistrography, and hysteroscopy. Treatment includes watchful waiting, medication to shrink the polyps, hysteroscopic removal of the polyp, or curitage.